In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a pollinator garden in just one container. It is super easy and you can be done in less than 10 minutes. This garden can help bring in beneficial insects and pollinators like butterflies and bees into your garden. The goal is to plant nectar-rich, brightly colored flowers. Colors like oranges, yellows, and reds seem to be most attractive to flying insects like bees, butterflies, and other pollinators. Today, I'm going to create a container that has a combination of brightly colored flowers and edible flowers and herbs so that it creates a multi-use container. And even if you have a small apartment balcony, you can absolutely have this on your balcony to give you lots of joy throughout summer and give you delicious herbs and flowers. I had this old container with some soil in it. I had daffodils from last year. I don't want to take off whole, all of the soil. I would just want to leave the bottom part as it is. But I'm going to enhance the soil by adding in alpha alpha meal and this organic shore start fertilizer from EB Stone. You can also use biotone, just something that has mycorrhizal fungi, which will help the roots stabilize in the container and a lot of the annuals are heavy feeders, especially these flowers. So I'm I want to give them a boost of fertilization as I add them into this container. This is the brown-eyed girl Helianthus. It is an endless blooming sunflower. I am really excited to have this in my garden because it looks utterly gorgeous. It is called the Sun Believable. It requires full sun and it is hardy in USDA zones 10 to 11. This is Misty Salvia. I love Salvia because of the gorgeous purple blooms and these are so pretty with the velvety petals and I definitely wanted this as part of the pollinators. It especially says on the tag too that it is pollinator friendly. This is hardy in USDA zones 10 and will bloom from summer right up until fall. And I'm adding this beautiful red zinnia that my son picked out because he wanted a red colored zinnia. <laughs> it is one of his favorite colors and that's the color he wanted to pick. So I thought it would be a nice addition. And of course, my favorite marigolds, which are also, again, edible and absolutely beautiful. I love the absolutely gorgeous blooms of marigolds. I have also added this purple petunia, which is another of my favorite flowers. I wanted to add peppermint in here to make it kind of like an edible garden plus a pollinator garden. I would strongly recommend against using any of the pesticides, chemical or organic, on this pollinator garden as much as possible. If you do have to use it, you can use an organic pesticide sparingly, but remember that not only is that pesticide going to kill the 
harmful pests, most of them are also going to kill the beneficial insects. So be very careful while spraying it with pesticides. I had also bought a butterfly bush for this pollinator garden, but ended up returning it. I have found it in so many garden recommendations all throughout the internet, and it looks so beautiful. It's such a gorgeous plant, but I kept reading about it being invasive in certain parts. And even though the tag said that this particular plant was non-invasive because of the way they had modified it, but I was still skeptical, so I bought it, but then ended up taking it back because I just did not want to take any chance with these plants that could be invasive. And I live in zone 10A here in California. So this plant, the butterfly bush, is very invasive in Oregon and Washington. And apparently it's banned uh, from being sold there too. So the fact that they're selling it here maybe means that it might be non-invasive. But when I went and checked the website, and I'll put the link down below so that you can check different plants on this particular website too. It will give you whether that plant is invasive in your zone. I couldn't find a clear enough answer. And so I just decided not to plant it and took it back. But it was a really pretty plant. So even though I'm giving you a list of recommendations here, Please check and make sure that none of these plants are invasive in your own area. And so just make sure you use as many plants that are non-invasive in your own garden. Some other options that you can add in this garden are yarrow, which is another beautiful flower that is drought tolerant and grows really well. Another one that I'm going to have in my raised bed is going to be a coneflower. I have kismet raspberry coneflower, kismet yellow cornflower. So I have two different colors. I brought lavenders because I lost a lot of lavenders last year. So I'm planting lavenders. I have this calabrocoa. I hope you enjoyed this and will plant a pollinator garden off your own. If you do, please feel free to tag me at Amrita Bordeke on Instagram. I would love to see what all of you create. Think of creating a pollinator garden as having a bouquet for the rest of your summer that just keeps blooming in these gorgeous shades. And it's so pretty and beautiful and all contained in this one tiny container and gives you joy throughout the season. One of the reasons why I have planted mint with this is because I wanted a mint to be in a closed container and not in my raised bed. And this was a beautiful way of planting mint, having it as part of this pollinator garden where I could use it in my day-to-day -day recipes, but also have it give this gorgeous smell and be a little bit of a pest repellent for the rest of the flowers. <laughs> so I've included mint in this, but feel free to include other herbs in it. Try your own combinations, have fun with it. That's the most important thing that you should be able to have fun with it. And please comment below and let me know what you have planted in your garden as a pollinator plant. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have an amazing, amazing day. Bye-bye.